Hey there, Jake from Drone Tech. Today we're going to be talking about how to optimize the frame rate and shutter speed of the Osmo to get the best video quality. Now, I'm sure you've seen or taken footage that looks like this. It's choppy, it flickers, and frankly can make you dizzy. Now, the reason this happens is most likely due to the frame rate and shutter speed of the video camera. This was shot at 24 frames a second and 1 500th of a second shutter speed. The Osmo allows us to shoot up to 4K at 24 frames a second and 30 frames a second, but at 1080p we can shoot 24, 30, 48, and 60 frames a second. Now this video was shot in 1080p to show the difference in the frame rate options. Frames per second, well, is exactly what it sounds like. It's how many frames or still images are captured in each second of video. I'll show you some sample footage in a bit with the different frame rates, and you can decide which is best suited for your shooting style. Now to begin, let's talk about something called the 180 degree shutter angle rule. Now, we're going to talk about this without getting too technical, but you know this rule dates back to old film cameras, but it's still applicable with today's digital video. Now it says that your shutter speed should be one over double your frame rate. Okay, so when you're shooting 30 frames a second, you should have a 1 60th of a second shutter speed. When you're shooting 48 frames a second, you should have a 1 96th of a second shutter speed, although most cameras will round this up to 1 100th of a second. And when you're shooting a 60 frame per second video, you'll want to shoot that at 1 1 20th of a second shutter speed. Here's a diagram showing the relationship between frame rate and shutter speed. The rectangle shows the total length of time from the start of one frame to the start of another. Keep in mind, if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, this process will happen 60 times in one second. The gray area of the rectangle shows the length of time the shutter is open. The 180 degree shutter angle rule says that the shutter should be open for half of the total time of the frame. Now, there are obvious exceptions to this rule, and we're not going to be discussing them in this video. But for a general place to start, if your videos are not to your liking, start enforcing this 180 degree shutter angle rule. So, let's take a look at some test footage. Alright, now let's slow it down so you can really see the effects. So on the left, the 17 degree shutter angle is a crisp, clean image and has a big jump in between each frame. In the middle, the 180 degree shutter, you see movement in the hand, uh, but there is a little jump still between each frame, and uh, it allows for the movement from frame to frame when it's animated. So on the right, you'll see the 360 degree shutter, and there's a lot of smearing and blur in each frame, uh, and that's because the shutter speed and the frames per second are identical. We're shooting at 1 30th of a second and 30 frames per second. So let's play the clip over and over a few times so you can see uh, at full speed what it actually looks like. So on the left, you can really see the jumpiness, right? It looks like it's flickering almost. Uh, in the center, it does look smooth. It looks like movement. It looks normal. Uh, and then on the right, it does have a lot of blur to it. So you can see pretty clearly here what the difference is. So now let's take a look at some panning. This 17 degree shutter angle is a little jumpy, uh, while the 180 degree shutter angle is a little smoother, right? It feels a little more natural. And when you get to the 360 degree shutter angle, it really gets mushed. Uh, it gets, almost turns blurry, but you do see the sharpness there at the end. So how do you shoot for a 180 degree shutter in bright light? First, open the DJI Go app. Click the icon that allows for editing of the camera settings. You're going to want to switch this to manual, and uh, you'll notice that you have two options here. You have ISO and shutter speed. So you're going to want to set your ISO to 100, and then the shutter speed to uh, the appropriate shutter speed for your 180 degree shutter rule. So if you are shooting at 30 frames per second, we're going to do 1 60th of a second. If you're shooting 60 frames per second, you're going to do 1 1 20th of a second. Now you'll notice the Osmo does not have an aperture setting, so it has a fixed 2.8 f-stop. So um, the first thing you'll notice here is that everything is blown out, it's overexposed, or about two stops overexposed. So in order to reduce the light into the sensor, we're going to have to add a neutral density filter to the front of the lens. 
Now, the filters that we use are made by Polar Pro, and they come in a three-pack. You have a polarizer, an ND8, and an ND16. The ND8 will remove three stops of light, and the ND16 will remove four. Now, we don't use the polarizer very much, but the ND8 and the ND16, they're in our kit all the time, and they get used on every shoot. These filters were designed to be used with the Inspire 1, but because the Osmo uses the X3 camera as well, these fit just fine. Now you can see that we're two stops overexposed, uh, so we're going to go and get the ND8 filter, and uh, we're going to unscrew the, uh, the, the filter that comes with the Osmo, and we're going to replace it with the ND8 filter. So um, as we put this filter on, you'll see an immediate change. All right, this has taken three stops of light out and uh, is now giving us a pretty good exposure. Uh, it's showing a little overexposed still, but um, much, much better. And uh, one thing to note here, um, you can play around with the shutter speed a little bit. You want to keep it at 60, but if you tilt the Osmo uh, up and down, you want to make sure you're not getting a false reading. Like here, we're pointing into the sky, and uh, that's going to make it, make it feel like that there's more light than there actually is because we're probably not going to be filming the sky, we're going to film down at the grass. So if you bring it down, you'll see, there you go, it goes negative one stop. Um, so this is a perfect filter for this, um, uh, for this situation. So we're going to leave this ND8 filter on. Here's a close-up look on how to change the filter on the Osmo. The first thing you're going to want to do is, is find the outer ring and turn it counterclockwise. There's a little grip on there, so you can give it a little force, but you shouldn't need to. It should come off pretty easily. Once you get it off, take it and put it in a safe place. Choose the ND filter that you plan on using and gently screw it back onto the Osmo. Now your filter's on and you're ready to go shoot. So let's talk about shooting in higher frame rates, specifically when to shoot in higher frame rates. So for us, we shoot in 30 or 60 frames per second based on the situation. If we are in a fast moving environment, if there's a lot of movement in the foreground, um, we will bump the frame rate to 48 or 60 frames per second. So uh, this clip here is footage taken from the Inspire One. It uses the same exact camera as the Osmo. And um, as you can see, this is, it's a little blurry in the foreground. Everything's moving really fast through the frame. So this clip was taken in 60 frames per second using the Osmo hanging out of the car window. And the reason that we chose 60 frames per second is because we were moving at about 25 miles an hour. And we wanted the video clip to be smooth. If we had shot this in 30 frames per second, you would see a lot of jumping in the foreground as the road and the guardrail moved by. Keep in mind that the 60 frame per second option is only available in the 1080p mode of the Osmo. So if you're getting a lot of flickering from high speed movement when shooting in 4K, um, you really have two options. You can drop it down to 1080p or you can film something that doesn't have as much motion. If you found this video useful, please like it, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe.